The housing data for June is starting to roll in and it's given us more confirmation that the market has slowed. The national average house price rose by less than 2% over the first half of this year. That compares to a 6% rise in the second half of last year. Now that slowdown is much in line with what we expected and I talked about some of the reasons behind that a few weeks back. So this week I'm going to delve into some of the interesting details of the housing data. The first thing to note is that there's a lot of variation across regions. We've seen house prices slow in some of the previous hotspots like Hamilton and Tauranga and they've actually fallen a little in Auckland. But we're still seeing some pretty strong price growth in the rest of the North Island for instance. So that should make us wary of ascribing too much to factors like the loan to value restrictions or the rise in mortgage rates which have applied more or less equally across the country. Local economic conditions still matter a lot for house prices too. Turning back to Auckland briefly, it is something of a special case. It's the only region where there's a major shortage of housing thanks to strong population growth and the low rate of building in years past. So it may seem a bit odd to see prices falling at a time of strong demand. Our view is that land prices in Auckland have been bid up strongly over the last few years on expectations about the development opportunities that would be opened up by the city's unitary plan. Now those hopes may have ended up being over-egged. The reality of rising costs and capacity constraints in the building industry mean that development may not be as profitable as people thought. Despite that, we are still expecting a growing wave of home building over the coming years. The number of homes consented in Auckland over the last year has risen to a fresh 12-year high. And more generally, the latest survey of business opinion showed that confidence in the building industry still remains at a high level. Firms are reporting more investment in equipment, a record pace of hiring and the highest level of output in 15 years. The number of them reporting finance as a constraint has picked up a bit but it's still low compared to history. Labour and capacity are still emerging as the far greater constraints. Talk to you next week.